Hey, you got time for a beer? I know I do. Welcome to my show. My name's Jake. Um, it's technically not Thursday, but this is coming out on Thursday because it's super late on Wednesday, and I don't have time to do this on Thursday. So, what I've got for you today um, is something new. Uh, it's a uh, beer from Allison Brewery. Allison Brewing Company, sorry. This one is called Gravity Shift. It sounds like it's going to be super good. Don't forget, you can find me at tubajake underscore 69 on untapped YouTube and Twitter. And on Instagram, you can find me at tubajake underscore. We're working on that. We'll see how that works out later, but not yet. Um, don't forget to tell me your stories. I like to tell them. Hopefully, you like to hear them because I'm going to keep telling them. Um, and if you like to hear your stories told, I will tell them um, because... Your friends of mine, hopefully, that keep watching this. I, I appreciate it, especially. So the beer today is called Gravity Shift. It's by Ellison Brewing Company. They're out of East Lansing. Uh, this is a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout with cacao nibs and vanilla beans. This should be delicious. Like, amazingly delicious. This is what I like, except for the fact that it is 14.5% alcohol by volume. So this is essentially wine that tastes like cocoa and vanilla. This is going to be delicious and dark, and I can tell already. Um, but also amazing. So um, when I went to Ellison, I asked for some uh, brand new glassware, and the guy said, this is what we've got. And I said, cool, give me one of those. So that's what we're drinking this out of, because that's what we've got. Every time I go to Ellison, they've got women's shirts. So if you're a woman and you want a shirt from Ellison, uh, they're very neat. They've got this this uh, printed thing on it. it. They're very cool. I like them a lot, except for the fact that they're women's shirts and they're super small on me. Um, and the branded glassware, they've pretty much got nothing. I think it's got something to do with the fact that they're opening another spot out in, uh, in Lansing proper, someplace, uh, some warehouse or whatever. But they, every time I go, they don't have stuff for me. So this is what I got, and it's great, and I like it a, a super ton. Plus, I got beers. Uh, I had one earlier, the Fiona, and I've got another one, I think, upstairs um, that's... Uh, I don't know, it's got gold foil on the top, which I think is beautiful. And I am definitely looking forward to cracking into that one eventually. Probably on here because, I mean, it's pretty. So we'll do that. Uh, so I'm going to drink this out of this today. Obviously, I'm not going to just dump it all in here because that's dumb. I'm not going to do that. But points on points, I will definitely do that. So anyway, let's get this going. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know if any of you noticed that, but this pours like motor oil. Um, it's amazingly dark. Amazingly dark. There's a little bit of head on the top. Um, very, very dark. It's supposed to be dark, and it is. And it's supposed to be sweet, and it is. And it's supposed to be heavy. And it smells lighter than what I was expecting it to smell, which is amazing. But let's let's see. It does not taste lighter than it's supposed to be. This tastes exactly as heavy as a 14.5% beer should taste. It's good. I like it a lot. Um, does this remind me of a beer? Um, uh, yes. I had something recently that was like this, um, but I don't remember right now what it was. It reminds me of just about every KBS that I've ever had. Uh, the Kentucky Bourbon Stout. It's heavy, it's, except this one, this one is smoother. Doesn't sound like it should be, right? Because, you know, they've they've worked really hard at making sure that the Kentucky Breakfast Stout, Kentucky Breakfast Stout is usually what it is, uh, the KBS Kentucky Bourbon Stout or Kentucky Breakfast Stout are two different things. 
but this one's more of a bourbon one. This one is heavy, heavy, like way heavy. Man, if I hadn't already been drinking today, this would have made me drunk. Just this, not this. This would have made me think about not drinking all of it is what it would have made me think, what it would have made me think about this. That didn't sound good coming out of my mouth. It's sticky. I, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this was clear and now it's brown. I can tell. Or like amber, if you will. You ever seen those, those bulbs that are supposed to be like, oh, they're fancy because they're yellowed? That's what color this is. Oh, man. I'm telling you now, this stuff, it pours like motor oil. You can see it, right? Can you see it? I can't tell from here. I think so. I can see it. So that's probably pretty good. Um... Kentucky breakfast out the Kentucky the the bourbon bourbon barrel aged stuff from like just about any of it from um from founders oh shoot what's the one um there's one that I think it's a I think it's something from Budweiser there's somebody that has one that's gingerbread flavored. I want to say that it's a it's a bourbon barrel aged gingerbread stout. And I want to say no, it's from Guinness. It's definitely from Guinness. It's a bourbon barrel aged Guinness um, stout, and it. I mean, except for the fact that there's not ginger in this, and it's all kinds of, uh, what did I say? Dark malts and and um, cacao and vanilla. It's very much like this. Um, there's more ginger in that one, obviously. But this one, do I get chocolate? No, I get bourbon. Do I get... Uh, Vanilla? Yeah, lots of it. There's a lot of vanilla in this. Uh, oh, excuse me. And it mostly tastes like dark. It tastes like dark. Not burnt, dark. And vanilla. And it should taste like... You'd think it would taste mostly like cocoa. Like... I don't know if you've got... If you guys... Oh, man. I don't know if you guys have ever tried it, but just putting a spoonful of cocoa powder in your mouth, because at some point in your life, you think, this is going to be amazing. And yet, cocoa powder, especially the Dutch process stuff, that is darker than your darkest soul does not taste like chocolate like you think it should. That stuff tastes like dirt, mostly, if I remember correctly. It's like dirt and dust and, and that's what you get out of it. But if you put it in a cake, it tastes like chocolate. Uh, the deepest, darkest chocolate, and it's delicious. So I do suggest that, but not straight. Not straight. I can understand why um, Montezuma, yeah, Montezuma, he was that Aztec warrior king, I think, something like that, that used to drink a ton of, uh, of chocolate-flavored drink daily. I mean, like, they're like, oh, he didn't drink very much. He didn't eat very much, but he drank a lot of that stuff. I mean, there's supposed to be a lot of um, 
caffeine in chocolate. So you got that. Plus, probably there's cocoa in it or, or um, coffee in it, probably. But also, it's supposed to be a lot like the, the, the beans are actually supposed to feel a lot more like coffee beans than they are what we think of as cocoa. I don't know. Um, does this remind me of a story? I'd like to say that it does, but really it doesn't. This just makes me want to talk about chocolate and cocoa and how this tastes. Um, three? There should be two more in here. There's at least a half of one left. Um, shoot, what do I want to say about this? It's delicious. <laughs> the crazy thing that I think about this is that it came in a four pack. I have three more upstairs. That's 14 and a half percent. Do I want to drink this out on a disc golf course? No. No, I don't. Would I drink this out at a disc golf course? Of course I would. It'd just take me as long as it took me to, to drink that Demos today. Because um, I, I had the raspberry Demos from, uh, from Old Nation that I got in a crowler. When I got this also, actually. That was delicious. It was in a crowler, so it was 32 ounces. Which is like, I don't know, four beers? Two, two beers at least. Two 16 ounce beers. That one was delicious. This one's delicious, but for different reasons. That one was all um, raspberry flavored. Uh, like that deep, dark raspberry that you don't get super often that's got the seeds still in it, kind of. It had a lot of the seed flavor from a raspberry in it, which, I mean, made it more bitter, but also easier to drink because it tasted like It tasted like raspberries. This is not. This tastes like bourbon and and cocoa. Actually, it's starting to taste a lot more like cocoa. It's thick with cocoa. And I don't know, vanilla maybe, maybe some. Okay, so anyway, cocoa. That made me think of a story. Okay, so a few years ago, I went with my sisters to go to Disneyland because I had never been. Um, some of my favorite parts from that were riding the Matterhorn. My favorite part about riding the Matterhorn was that we decided that we were going to wait so that we could get front row seats. So I got to sit in the front of the Matterhorn which was amazing because, you know, you don't, I, it was my first time in there and we waited so that I could go in the front, which was awesome. I went in the front and as I'm going, I start laughing just hysterically because when your mustache does this in the wind, it's hilarious. <laughs> and it did. Uh, at that point in time, I did not have the rest of this. I just had the mustache and my mustache was flapping in the wind. It was hilarious. It was, it felt weird. Super weird and made me giggle, which is, I, I like to giggle, to, to giggle. It's fun. Um, but yes, it was very funny and I liked that a lot. There are probably several other things that I got to do at, uh, there were, when, that I wasn't expecting. From what I understood, there was not supposed to be a lot of drinking at Disneyland. And there definitely wasn't as much as I was expecting, but I did, I got to go to, I don't know, some fancy plant, some fancy pants place where we probably shouldn't have really been, but we were because we could get a reservation there, but we had to cancel a different one that we already had, which we did do. And they were like, oh yeah, sure. No problem. Cause you were in this other park before and you want to go to this park now. Which, I mean, they're 50 yards apart. And the part, the, the places that we were going also 50 yards apart. But we still got to go to this other one. And they let us cancel our other, our other reservation. 
and booked this one, which was probably way better. Um, I remember getting a flight of beers, which was nice. It was very nice, but it was not as nice as the conversation the guys were having that were behind us. They were like some, they were doing some, uh, I don't know, oil something or other, something or another. I don't know why they were doing this in Disneyland, but the, the one dude that walked out, I was not expecting it, had like a 10 gallon hat, like, you know, the big one, it was just a big one, like over his chest as he's walking out of this restaurant. I was like, that is super strange. And I was not expecting that from somebody that's talking about doing a deal in oil, but it's exactly what I was thinking about when I was listening to somebody do a deal in oil. I mean, cause you're thinking Yosemite Sam, right? I mean, I was at that point in time, I had a gigantic mustache and that's pretty much all I had, but it was like down here. <laughs> but it was super strange, I think, but it was a very nice restaurant and I had very good food there. And I would definitely go back again if I had the chance. Because Disneyland is super fun. Just about as much fun as Disney World. Uh, there's a lot more places to go in Disney World. I'm not going to lie. There are. Uh, that I haven't been even. And I've been to most of the places in Disney World. Just not all of them. It would be super fun to go there. <sighs> anyway. Wow, that took a while. I've got, I've got a quote for you. This one is from Pat Tillman. He was a safety, I believe, for the um, Arizona Cardinals. Uh, before that, safety for the um, for the University of Arizona. He went into the military and historically famous for being or for being killed in the Iraq War. Come to find out, overall got killed by friendly fire, which was unfortunate. But, inspiring guy because at that point in time, we needed heroes and he was one. He said, passion is what makes life interesting. And I can definitely appreciate that. So anyway, um, you can catch me at tubajake underscore 69 on on tap YouTube and Twitter and on Instagram Instagram at tubajake underscore. Don't forget to tell me your stories because I like to hear them. Hopefully you do too because I'm going to tell them and if you tell me some then I've got more teller, stories to tell. Please give me more stories to tell. I love them. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that everybody else can hear about this for sure. Um, and uh, I guess I'll see you next time when you got time for a beer.